Hello and welcome. Today we're going to look at processors, and this is actually a very important part of your computer. There's a lot to cover, so let's just jump right into it, and um, you'll learn a lot about processors. So let's get into the slides. So the first thing we're going to talk about is actually the microprocessor, and this is your CPU, and we also call this your central processing unit. You know, most people just call it a CPU, so if you just understand, you know, what it is and what it does, that's great. People don't really walk around and call it the central processing unit. So the CPU, it's housed on a single chip, so it's only one chip that's within your entire computer. And you can also think of the CPU as the brains of your computer, you know. It's what controls everything and makes everything work for you. So, you know, the CPU is actually made up of two parts. and you know, so it's not, even though it's housed on one chip, there are two parts to the CPU, and you don't really see them separately. When you look at a CPU, all you do is you see that CPU, um, you know. So the two parts are actually the, uh, the control unit and the ALU. So let's just jump back into the slides, and you'll, you'll see these, and we'll define them a little bit better. So the two parts, as we said, are your control unit and the arithmetic logic unit, the ALU. Um, and so these do have unique functionality. So let's look at them, and we're going to first look at what the control unit is. So the control unit is, think of it as the boss of, your, of the CPU of the entire computer. And what this does is it actually instructs, you know, the following, which you will see, um, you know, your memory, the ALU, and I.O. devices, it instructs them on how to respond to program instructions. So a program will say, hey, go and do this. And, you know, this control unit is then taking that instruction from your program, interpreting it, and sending it out to the required device to get that task completed. So you can see that the control unit is, you know, it's like the boss because it's telling everyone what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. So it's a very, um, you know, important part of your processor. The next part we're going to look at is the ALU, the arithmetic logic unit. And this is also important because this is what performs your basic arithmetic within your computer. So this is what does all your mathematics and you know computations for you and everything. And you know, it's performed bitwise logical instructions for you. Um, you know, you can bitwise um, functions, you know, this is you're looking at a single bit and doing operations on a single bit you know, at a time. So it's, you know, very specific and everything. And a CPU can contain multiple ALUs. So it's not like just one ALU for an entire computer system. You can have multiple a ALUs within your CPU. So keep that in mind that, you know, there are multiple ones so that multiple um, arithmetic calculations can be performed at the same time. So we're going to continue looking at um, CPUs and everything. And next up is we're going to look at the chip capacities. And so as you can see here, um, we have something called a word size. And a word size is basically the number of bits that the CPU is able to process at one time. And nowadays, most new computers are actually 64-bit machines. So when you, you know, you're looking at a computer and you hear that it's a 64-bit machine, this is what it's referring to is the word size that can be processed at a single time. You know, this is a great, you know, upgrade nowadays being able to do 64-bit computations because earlier systems were either 32-bit or 16-bit. So you can see we're able to do a lot more computations um, now on larger numbers now than we were able to do before. Because, you know, I'll let you do the math, but um, if you think about it, you know, Take 2 to the 16 and see what you get with that, and then take 2 to the 64 and see what number you get with that. You'll see that it's a very significant, um, you know, difference within the number. So, you know, and you'll be able to see the range of values that our systems are now able to computate. So, you know, that's why it's a great thing that, you know, this tech, the technology's been advancing and the chip ca um, capacities are increasing as well, and most new systems you will find um, are 64-bit machines. Um, so now let's jump back in. We've been talking about bits, so now let's continue talking about um, bits and bytes within the slides as well. So 
a bit, as I mentioned you know, earlier, it is the smallest amount of data um, within the computer. So all your data that's in memory, that's stored on your hard drive, or even being transmitted over the internet, it's being sent as bits. It's stored as bits. So this is what, you know, the smallest amount of data that is able to be used. And so a bit can either be a zero or a one. And we take eight bits and this forms a single byte. And so you can see here, here is one byte as we have eight bits. And so if you think about a 64-bit computer, it can process eight bytes at a time. And so, um, you know, as I said, bits and bytes, it's very important to understand the differences. And then from a byte, you can get into, you know, your kilobit, kilobytes, um, megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes. So you can see how they all are related and, you know, they are um, all intertwined as well. And as well, so now, you know, we've been looking at um, what CPUs can process. Now let's look at the processing speed of what CPUs can handle. So let's look at the clock speed. And so the clock speed is basically the number of times per second that a CPU can actually go out, get an instruction, you know, execute the instruction. So it's how fast the CPU is able to work and complete the tasks that you want to have done. And so you can see here that a microsecond, you know, pretty, pretty short, you know, time frame if you think about it. And so if you think about this, this is a millionth of a second. So I'll let you comprehend how short that is. And this is what a lot of older systems were able to um, work at. It was this millionth of a second, this microsecond. Some newer systems now are actually operating at a nanosecond. A nanosecond is one billionth of a second. And this is what, as I said, a lot of the newer systems are. And then if you even want to get into your supercomputers, this is a picosecond. So this is one trillionth of a second. You know, so that's, you know, that's some pretty fast operating speeds now if you think about it, that, you know, we're able to have, um, you know, instructions operated at a billionth of a second. Just, that's super fast. And, you know, processors are getting faster and faster and faster every day. You know, and it's great. And one of the things that has actually been a huge benefit is, um, you know, the um, multi cores and everything, which we will talk about. But let's jump in and look at actual CPU clock speeds that we have available to us. One of the early terms that we used to have was your megahertz. And, you know, this is what we had, you know, until the end of the 1990s is, you know, your megahertz. And this was one million cycles per second and you can see the abbreviation. Your gigahertz, this is currently what we have as well, and this is your one billion cycles per second. The next step would be your uh, terahertz and your petahertz, and these aren't available yet, but you know, maybe in the future we'll be able to get to these. I mean, who would have thought that we would be at a gigahertz now where you know, technology's been changing at such a rapid speed? So you know, we've been looking at speeds, and something that's been actually been done to help improve speed, as I said, was actually going to this multi-core. But before we get to multi-core, there's actually an older technology called SMP that was used ahead of time. So, you know, it was the same idea, but it has its differences, and it's the precursor to a multi-core system. So let's jump back into the slides and look at, um, you know, this um, as well. So this, it is a multiprocessor system, and so your SMP, you can kind of see in this image um, in the, the top um, and on the left side that you, there's two CPUs. That's where your SMP is. And so you actually had two physical CPUs on the same motherboard, on the same system board. And now we've actually gotten into this multi-core where we have one physical CPU and it contains multiple CPUs. So before, in older technology, we actually had this SMP where we had two physical CPUs, but now technology is advanced, you know, that we've gotten to this point. So, you know, it's pretty awesome. And as I've been saying, they are called cores, um, each of the physical CPUs on there. And so why did we go to multi-core? Well, you know, process um, multiple operations at a single time. It gives us the opportunity to process more at one time, which helps improve speed. And as well, 
you know, we have parallel processing, which is, you know, able to compute at the same time as well. And then, you know, this is, you split tasks into parts and divide it across the cores. So, you know, it's a pretty, pretty interesting thing to be able to do. And there is a lot of, you know, research that is going into parallel processing and everything. So, you know, the multi-core architecture has definitely helped with this as well and everything. So, you know, keep that in mind. Most things now are multi-core. You could get like, you know, an Intel i5, which is a dual core. You could get an Intel i7, which is a quad core. So you could get, you know, CPUs that have a lot of different cores as well. So, um, but as I've been saying, things have been um, progressing rapidly and, you know, things are actually going to be changing soon because of something called Moore's Law, which I'll explain in the slides. So Moore's Law, uh, you could, was actually created by Gordon E. Moore, who was one of the founders of Intel. And, you know, this law came about in 1965 and people started calling it Moore's Law. So that's a little background information for you. And Moore's Law states that the number of transistors in a dense integrated circuit doubles approximately every two years. This is directly from Wikipedia. If you really want to know a simple definition, it's basically every two years processing speed will double. So keep that in mind. And I actually have an image here as well that you can see this trend has been holding true. So, you know, you can look at this and you can see as well that the trend has been holding true. And you can see that each of the bullet points is actually a, um, a processor. And you can see the um, on the x-axis we have the um, years and on the y-axis is the um, transistor as well. So, you know, this has been holding true for many of years now, but people are actually worried that it's going to end. So, you know, why is it going to end? Well, you know, they're saying actually in 2020 that that's when people are kind of predicting that it's going to end. And one of the reasons is we can only make things so small that, you know, you can't fit more into something that's already that small. So that's why they're predicting that it's going to end. But there's new technology out there uh, that they're looking at called graphene. And this might actually replace a lot of the transistors that are on, um, you know, the system right now. So graphene is actually a, um, you know, a new technology that they're looking at. And they're trying to work with right now to be able to get CPUs to work faster. Um, you know, so that's... That's pretty interesting, you know, stuff that's going on right now. Um, you can find YouTube videos and everything about this, and you can read about it as well. So we've been looking at processors just in themselves, but we've actually, as well, we have something called specialty processors, and these help, you know, enhance our performance as well because they take some of the workload off of the CPU, and they take over and you know, make things work faster. So let's jump in and look at some of these specialty processors. So one of them is a coprocessor, which, you know, it's designed to improve, you know, a specific aspect of computing. And a lot of you are familiar with these and everything. You just don't really realize it at the moment. And believe it or not, our cars can actually contain around 70 different specialty processors. So our cars in everyday life using these we are, you know, contain these specialty processors. And another one that we can have, um, that we use daily within our computing, especially those that like to play games, is our graphics processing unit, our GPUs, or your graphics card. And, you know, this helps with the graphics as it does all the number crunching, the data, data crunching, and it alleviates the CPU. So it handles only graphics, though. So keep that in mind. And the CPU doesn't need to do any of the processing of 3D images or anything. It helps with your gameplay, makes things smoother and everything not as choppy. So the GPU is just one example of a coprocessor, of a specialty processor that we have. Um, you know, I know it's been a lot of information about processors all at once, um, but hopefully you found it interesting and everything, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.